In this episode of Over 50 TV, I'm going to tell you why hiring a financial planner is smart business, and I'm also going to tell you how you can go about hiring a financial planner when you're over 50. Welcome back to Over 50 TV. My name is Lou Reyes. Experts say that if you're over 50 years old, you should have six to ten times your average annual salary saved in a retirement account. If you don't have that much cash set aside, you may be worried that, that hiring a financial advisor will open you up to a lecture about how important it was to save money when you were younger. But don't be fooled by the statistics about your peers and their savings habits. The average 50-year-old American makes about $59,000 per year. Americans between the ages of 50 and 54 have an average of $146,000 saved for retirement. That's not even close to the $354,000 minimum experts recommend to be on track for a financially successful retirement. If you don't have enough money saved for retirement, you, my friend, you are not alone. Certified financial planners recognized by the Certified Financial Planning Board of Standards can help you manage your finances, including, including your retirement accounts and other investments. CFPs must pass a difficult set of standardized exams, adhere to a strict set of ethics, and complete extensive education. A CFP can help you look at your current situation objectively, listen to your goals, and show you how to build a bridge to those goals starting where you're at today. Here's what you need to know about hiring a financial planner when you're over 50. Number one, your financial advisor works for you. So choose a financial advisor with several decades of experience. Now, this may sound like a form of ageism, but with age comes experience, and you deserve a financial advisor that's been in the field long enough to have experience helping people like you overcome the problems you face. Number two, Financial advisors can't legally make promises about returns. However, an advisor managed investment portfolio, that may grow faster than the self-managed portfolio. Vanguard recently published a study showing that a hypothetical $500,000 investment grows to more than $3.4 million over 25 years when managed by a financial planner. The same self-managed portfolio reached just $1.6 million over the same time period. Number three, Understand how your financial planner makes their money. An advisor paid on commission can't act in your best interest 100% of the time while they're tending to their personal financial goals. Find out how your financial planner makes money before you hire them. I recommend looking for a fee-only certified financial planner. Expect to pay a flat annual fee of $2,000 to $7,500, an hourly fee of, of $200 to $400, or or you'll pay 1% of your assets under management annually. How to find a financial planner when you're over 50? You can find a financial advisor in your area with the help of the National Association of Personal Financial Advisors, or NAPFA. As one of the largest organizations of fee-only financial advisors, NAPFA maintains a database of advisors that is searchable by zip code and by area of specialization. Never stay with a financial planner that isn't a good fit. Remember, your financial planner, they may have a huge impact on whether or not you reach your financial goals. If your first attempt at finding the right one, the right advisor doesn't work, don't get discouraged. Just focus on your plan for your future and keep looking for the right financial planner who can help you make your dream, your goals a reality. Think about how your financial situation contributes to your ability to live the life that you want during the next few decades of your life. Then what I suggest is create a one-sentence financial goal, and, and let me give you some examples. You may say, I need to keep my principal safe and use the interest. Or you could say, I want to provide an inheritance or leave a financial legacy. Another one, I need $3,000 a month in reliable income, or I want to spend down my assets and enjoy my money. You could also say, I want to provide ongoing support for my spouse and children after I die. As you think about the advice from your financial planner, constantly refer back to those goals. And then ask yourself a couple more questions. Does this guidance serve the goal? And does the financial planner respect the goal? If not, move on to find a financial planner that's ready to help you build a bridge between where you are at today and where you want to be in the future. Well, that's all I've got for you today, folks. I hope this video was helpful. 
As always, if you have any questions, please comment in the comment box, and I'll be happy to to address your question just as soon as possible. I will ask you to do one more thing, though. If you would, please go ahead and hit that little subscribe button. It's underneath your screen. There's also a little bell. If you hit that little bell, every single time I upload a new video, you'll be notified in your inbox. Well, as I always say, have a great day, everybody. (laughs) 